Well, you know, you are quite important. You've got a lantern and you've got a bag on your back. You know, so overall, I mean, it's, and you've got your first aid kit. Like, listen, this is brilliant. You know, you might even be surprised. Yeah, the English. Bonavigion, a bonavigasai, a fobolivank. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, croiso maur, a big welcome. Ir bedd ar benig to the special graveyard. And here we are at this time, almost between times, at eventide, at the time when the telling of stories has been filling the hearts of people in this country for centuries. And here, at this special time of year, I think it's made only fair to tell a story that has been enchanting people in Wales for centuries. And still further, that tells us a little about the dark skies that shine down their light and hope upon us at this time of year, when the time changes. Years and years and years ago, Llawer o flynedd and all, when I was a boy, before the time when I was a boy, when there were wolves in Wales, in the far north of the country, in the mountains that are the home of eagles, in that part of the world that we call Arari, there was a valley, a beautiful valley, a valley between two mountains the mountain of Dinewib and the mountain of Hibo. And in that quiet, beautiful valley, for many, many years, there grew a huge number of animals and beasts that entertained the people. Why? Because in that beautiful valley, almost the original Cum Havrid, there were stags and there were wolves, and there were wild boars. And people would rest and entertain themselves in a manner not so popular these days. Because there, the good people of Wales would go to hunt. Not in a terrible, nasty way, only to uh, maybe get enough for food for a feast at the end of the day. But hunt they would. And several or eight centuries ago, there was a wonderful man who ruled as the Prince of Wales. His name was Llewellyn Ab Yorweth. But he was the greatest Prince of Wales that we had ever seen. In fact, he was the Prince of Gwynedd. So great was he that they gave him a nickname. Llewellyn Vaur. Llewellyn the Great. You see how it works? And Llewellyn Vaur would spend his time hunting. From a very, very young boy, when his father, Yorweth, was in charge, he was given a special dog. A dog that grew up with him, that hunted by his side, that was given the name of Gellet. And Gellert and Llewellyn built up a relationship that only a man and his dog can have. Now, as Llewellyn grew older and he became the mighty prince that he was, of course, he gathered other hunting dogs. He had a whole pack of dogs that would come with him wherever he went in Wales. But Gellert was always the special one. When you become important in Wales in that time and you have a court and you have people who rely upon you, then yes, these dogs would come with you. 
But Gellert always had the pride of place, for Gellert would sleep at the feet of Llewellyn. And wherever Llewellyn went, Gellert would go. Gellert was given a name, a name by the soldiers and the court and the family of Llewellyn. He was known as Ki Fadlon, the faithful dog. For that dog was the most faithful that Llewellyn had ever known. Now, as happens in this world, occasionally a prince must marry. And Llewellyn did just that. He met a wonderful, beautiful princess by the name of Joan, Lady Joan of Wales. What else was she going to do but other than marry the Prince of Wales? And so they decided they were going to have a great party. And off they went to celebrate the wedding. And as occasionally happens after a wedding celebration, Joan, a few weeks later, announced that she was going to have a baby. Indeed, there was great joy amongst the people. Llewellyn was a bit scared. Hadn't had one before. Somebody pointed out to him, Llewellyn, you're not having the baby. <laughs> it's going to be Joan that's going to be doing the work. Oh, really? Things were explained to Llewellyn and he realised and he thought, oh, well, what am I going to do? And he was quite happily um, engaged in other things for about seven or eight months. Fighting off Normans, uh, you know, creating treaties, just, you know, making things happen in a sort of Prince of Wales sort of way. And then the announcement came. In those days, you didn't always uh, spend a great deal of time in the birthing room, but the baby came and there was joy and everyone rejoiced. And everyone rejoiced. Oh, <laughs> phew. <laughs> Excellent. So Llewellyn went, oh, great, it's time for us to have a party. Well, actually, he was from Gwynedd, so what he said was, oh, it's great, it's time for us to have a party. And off they went, and they travelled all up into the mountains, and Llewellyn had a wonderful idea. Let us go to the Cwm Hyfryd. Let us go to the beautiful valley. Let us hunt, and we shall have a feast, and everyone will be rejoicing. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> uh, it's a slow crowd, but you're getting there. And off they went. Now, Llewellyn, as I said, was a bit, uh, a bit sort of young as far as the old birthing thing was concerned. Wasn't entirely au fait with the process and had discovered... Oh, by the way, I'd just better point out, um, uh, it was a baby boy and they named him David. David Up Llewellyn. Up Yorweth just in case you wanted to know. So, uh, he wasn't entirely au fait with the birthing process and he wasn't entirely... Um, um, wasn't entirely convinced that... Um, uh, that uh, he didn't understand, really, why Joan was so tired. <laughs> wasn't entirely sure why this was the case. One of the wet nurses pointed out to Llewellyn some of the things that had happened and he realised that perhaps the best thing would be for Joan to have a room in his wonderful court to herself, where she might sleep during the day to gather a little bit of strength after the event. But suddenly, suddenly something struck him. The baby boy. Who can look after the baby boy while Joan is resting? What should I do? And he had a wonderful idea. He knew exactly what to do. His faithful dog, Key Fadlon, Gellet. Gellet would look after the baby in the room next door to Joan while he was out hunting with his other dogs and the rest of his great happy band. And this, he thought, was the perfect solution. So he created a wonderful crib 
a beautiful wooden carved crib designed for the prince, for the, uh, the son of a prince, and he placed the baby in the crib with wonderful cloths and blankets, and he put a nice little basket down for Gellert to sleep next to the crib, and he crept in next door to see how Joan was getting on, and thankfully, Joan was fast asleep. So, rejoicing, Llewellyn leapt onto his horse and off he went, with his soldiers and his court and the rest of his hunting dogs, and out he went, out into the beautiful valley, and uh, so blessed was he that day that within an hour they had caught a wonderful stag that would have them feasting for the rest of the week. And he knew that that was sufficient because he only hunted for his needs and not for excess sport. He came back full of the joys of spring to tell Joan and he crept into the bedroom and he saw that Joan was still fast asleep. He'd only been out for an hour. He was over the moon. And then he walked next door to get Gellert. And what a sight struck his eyes. For Gellert was sitting in the basket with blood all over his chops and his teeth and his fur and the crib was overturned and there was a pool of red blood there. Oh. Llewellyn could not believe his eyes. What had happened? There could be only one solution. Overcome with sorrow and anger, directed at his faithful dog, whom he could not believe had slaughtered his baby boy. With anger and that thinking, he took up his sword, and with one cleft of his sword, he struck down his faithful dog. And with that, he fell to his knees and began to weep. But as the tears flowed down his cheeks, a sound caught his eye, a caught his ear, another cry, but not the cry of sadness, the cry of a young baby boy who was just woken from sleep and needs his mother's milk. Llewellyn could not believe his ears. He stood up, he picked up the overturned crib, and there, lying in those wonderful blankets, was his baby boy, smiling and gurgling as a baby boy only can. And next to the baby boy, Torn to shreds was the body of a wolf. At that moment, Llewellyn could not believe what it was that he had done, for he knew that his faithful dog had been faithful to the end. His faithful dog had protected his baby boy from the ravaging wolf. Oh, Gellert, what have I done? Please, Lord, will you ever forgive me? Llewellyn was so overcome with grief that he picked up the cleft body of his faithful dog and walked out into the valley and there produced a wonderful grave, placed the body of his dog in that grave, covered it over and lay a stone and to this very day, it bears the name Gellert's Grave, Bath Gellert. And people come from far and wide to pay their respects to the faithful dog that is Gellert. It is said, one of the, one of the guests I 
that Llewellyn vowed Llewellyn the Great never smiled again for the rest of his life. But this is not a story with a sad ending. This is a story with a happy ending. Because the faithful dog is faithful to us all. Because his honour and virtue was so great that he was taken by the gods that rule these things up into the sky. And to this very day, that hunting dog lights the way for us. For he is now known as Canis Maior, or Sirius, or the dog star. Ydy chi erioed wedi clywed y diwediad mae ci ydy ffrind gorau dyn. Ffrind gorau pob gwraig hefyd o ran hynny. Mae'r rhan fwyaf o gwn yn ffyddlon iawn, a byddan nhw'n gwarchod eu perchnogion gyda ffo blewyn o'u corff. Gall stori o amser maeth yn ôl eich helpu o bosib i ddeall hyn. Un bore, aeth Llywelyn Tywysog Cymru, allan i hela gyda'i ddynion. Roedd e wrth ei fodd yn hela a physgota. Roedd y ma bach gyda'r tywysog o'r enw Dafydd. Roedd ganddo gi ffyddlon iawn hefyd o'r enw Gelert. Doedd hwn ddim yn gi cyffredin, bleiddgi gwyddelig hardd o dde. Roedd pawb yn gwybod ei fod e'n gi ffyddlon a mynedgar a theirngar. Roedd Llywelyn yn ymddiried yn gelert i warchod ei fab. Ond roedd anifail arall hefyd yn gwylio o'r ceiau. Gwelodd y tywysog a'i ddynion yn gadael ar gefn neu cyffylau. Llyfodd ei weflau. Roedd e'n heliwr a mynedgar. Sleifiodd yn dawel drwy'r borfa. Oedodd ychydig. Roedd yn rhaid iddo aros ei gyfle. Roedd e'n gallu gweld bod drws y caban hela yn gil y gored. Gwthiodd e fai drwyn. Ffroenodd y blaidd yr awyr. Bi bron i'r arogleon o'r gegin dynnu ei sylw, ond roedd y llwybr i'r gegin yn rhy beryglus. Roedd o'i dolion o gwmpas y lle. Roedd e'n gallu gweld ffordd haws o lawer o gael bwyd i'w genawon fach. Roedd Dafydd yn cysgu'n drwm. Cripiodd yn ei flaen. Trodd Dafydd yn ei gwsg. Roedd hyn yn ddigon i'r y buddio gelert. Ysgyrnygodd ar y blaidd mawr. Syllodd y ddau yn ifail ar ei gilydd. Camodd y blaidd yn nes at Dafydd. Dyma'r arwydd i gelert lami. Dychreion nhw ymladd yn ffyrnig. Tarodd cynffon y blaidd y cryd. Dim ond un fyddai'n gallu ennill. Daeth y tywysog Llywelyn a'i wir adref. Roedden nhw'n edrych ymlaen at wledd fawr. Ond wrth i Llywelyn groesu'r iard, gwelodd ôl gwaed ym homan. Parlyswyd ef gan ofn. Beth sydd wedi digwydd? Gofynnodd i wyddynion. Roedden nhw'n gallu gweld corff gelert wedi ei orchuddio a gwaed yn gorwedd ar draws y drws. Edrychodd y tywysog yn y stafell Dafydd. Roedd y cryd ben i weired, a doedd dim golwg o'i fab yn unman. Sut gallu ti'n wneud hyn? Rwy ti wedi lladd fy mab arthiodd ar gelert. Yn ei ddicter, hyrddiodd y tywysog ei gleddydd i ochr y ci. Ymhen ychydig eiliadau, clywodd Llywelyn gryg wan. 
yng nghornel yr ystafell, gwelodd Dafydd yn pipo o dan y blancedi. Rhaid bod gelert wedi ei lusgo yn onofalus i'w guddio rhag ofn y byddai blaidd arall yn ymosod. Roedd corff blaidd marw yn gorwedd ger y cryd. Gweiddodd Llywelyn yn llawen, roedd ei etifedd yn ddiogel. Ond yna trodd a gweld ei ffrind gorau yn farwn gelain. Roedd Llywelyn yn llawen iawn bod Dafydd yn ddiogel, ond roedd yn torri ei galon am yr hyn a wnaeth. Dywedir na wenodd Llywelyn byth ers hynny. Sut gallai e fod wedi amau ei ffrind ffyddlon? Gosododd Llywelyn garreg wrth afon glaslyn, er mwyn i bobl gofio am gelert. Gellir gweld bedd gelert hyd at y dydd heddiw, a dyna'n wir ar roddodd yr enw i'r pentref, sef bedd gelert. Mae gwers yn y stori hon. Peidiwch byth cymryd unrhyw beth yn ganiau tawl. Gobeithiwch y gorau a dim y gweithaf.